Hello, everybody. How is everyone doing? I hope you had a great Easter. How are you keeping? I hope it wasn't a shock to come back to reality after. I hope it wasn't a shock to come back to reality after the break ended, the Easter break ended. Welcome to Isabella Banks YouTube channel where we discuss all things Harry, Meghan and their level up journey. If you're new here, I am Wheezy and it's great to meet you virtually. So how was your Easter break? I hope it was loads of food, rest and pigging out like me. I ate so much on Easter Sunday is ridiculous. It was like food was going out of fashion. It was like food was going right out of fashion. Okay, if you're here and you can hear me, would you like to give me a thumbs up in the comment section so I know you're here? I can see that there are a few people here with me, uh, but... I can't see whether you can actually hear me. If you just give me a thumbs up in the comment section, that would do. Oh, that's fantastic. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Norma. How are you keeping? Good to see you all here. Okay. Um, I'm so glad you made it. I'm so glad you were here to spend time with me this evening. We have a few things to talk about. And there are a few things to do as well. Let's call this um, Busy Tuesday or Ac Activism Tuesday. Tuesday. I'll explain what I mean in a second as we go along with the video. But yeah, just to say thank you for being here and you are all welcome. Okay, so um, the British royal family, before we get into that, um, I would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge a devastating event involving the World Central Kitchen, which happened over the Easter holidays. As we know, the World Central Organization, the World Central Kitchen is an organization the Sussexes have partnered with in the past. And recently, the World Central Kitchen team faced a very tragic incident in Gaza where seven members of their team lost their lives in, uh, in an IDF strike. Despite operating in a deconflicted zone and coordinated movements with the IDF, their convoy was hit as they were delivering humanitarian aid. This heartbreaking loss serves as a stark reminder of the dangers faced by humanitarian workers in conflict zones. Our thoughts are with the families and loved ones of those who lost their lives, and we stand in solidarity with the World Central Kitchen as they navigate this difficult time. Um, I think there is something we can do to show our support for them, but we'll come back to them to that bit towards the end of the video, we'll come back to this. Okay, so as we discussed in our last video, we will not be doing the YouTube masterminds uh, that I had proposed we start doing on Thursday, just because there wasn't a lot of engagement and I don't want to bring information to you that you are not interested in, it's just not worth the energy that I put into preparing the videos. So with that in mind, instead of offering the mastermind classes for people who are content creators, what I will be doing instead is offering 
something called a Spotlight Thursday. Uh, what this means is that we will be offering anyone who would like to support, who would like support with their channel, an opportunity to be shouted out on my channel in a bid to assist their channel growth. So if you would like us to shine a spotlight on your channel, please contact me by email, the comment section of any of my videos or any of my socials. I am on all platforms. Well, not all platforms. I am on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok mostly. You can find me on any of those platforms. And the links to those platforms are all on my about page. So this opportunity is available whether you con you create uh, content related to the Sussexes or not. The entire goal is just to support people who support Harry and Meghan, okay? So remember, we rise by lifting others up and that is the goal. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the media, as usual, <laughs> the British royal family, their attempts to force Harry and Meghan to dull their own shine because Kate and the King are said to have cancer. And I have um, a surprise activity that we can all have fun getting engaged in. I will leave the surprise until we get to it and see how you react to that surprise. Okay. So, as usual, I think the Royal Rotor have a few discussions on rotation uh, in respect to Harry and Meghan. Oh, before I start, let me say hello to the people who have joined us. Hey, Connie Balmer in Baron's voice. <laughs> hi, Beverly. Hi, Raffaella. Hi, Sam. Hi, Janet. Hi, Kathy. So good to see you all. Thanks for being here. All right, let's begin. So I think the Royal Rotor, honestly, I have come to the conclusion and I'm making a list that the Royal Rota have a few discussions on rotation as it relates to Harry and Meghan in their media content planner. And one of them is polls with negative results. So just look at this headline, which says, should Prince Harry be deported from the US over past drug use? The Daily Mail polls thinks, reveals what Americans think. They think they see that for the most part, people don't really care in America whether Prince Harry lied on his visa application, but they would like to act like people do care. Uh, and it's obvious to me that would, they would like to incite the American public about this issue, which is obvious that unless you are directly in or you have a direct interest in this issue or you've been following the royals closely most people don't even know what they're talking about it's quite clear it's even quite clear to be honest it's quite clear that this is a made-up poll because i'm sure most people don't even know what's going on am i right tell me if i'm right in the comment section most people you talk to, do they even know what's going on? Do they even understand what's going on? Uh, for my American viewers, tell me in the comment section. Oh, thank you, Joy. Thank you for your super sticker. <laughs> do they know what's going on? And see, it would seem to me that they don't even know Exactly. Sussex Love says they don't even know what's going on. They're so busy with their lives. As, uh, uh, as popular as Harry and Meghan are, I really doubt that Americans spend time thinking about their... Oh, thank you, Connie Barmer. Thank you for the super sticker. I really doubt that Americans spend time thinking about what... Prince Harry put on his visa application. 
I really, really seriously doubt it. But having planted this information, having planted this information in a poll so that they can talk about it. Um, oh, before I go on to talk about the next thing, someone, I think one of the royal reporters mistakenly uploaded this to social media. This is like a social media content grid for the Royal Rota. See this? Transport, crime, local news, property, royals. Yeah? Meghan and Harry. Then you've got a category for Kate and then the Kate and William and then their children. Trump, weather, natural disasters, Brexit, trending SEO. This is their content grid. I think it's quite useful for me being a content creator to use for my own purposes as well. But um, it's quite interesting to see that they have uh, a system with which I'm sure this is a broader system. I'm sure there is a more detailed system that determines what they discuss about Harry and Meghan on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, that the day when they did the article on the polls, it was poll day. And uh, on another day, it's let's talk about their children day. Anyway, um, Sharon Osborne was on Talk TV and they were talking about whether people were interested in this uh, topic. Let me just play it for you. It just take me a second to pull it up. To pull it up, where is it, where is it? Mm. And for funny enough, she uh, was she spoke the mind of what I would think an ordinary per thinking person would think about. Um, because she wasn't nasty in this instance. Actually, they even said have a. You can see in the interview, the interviewer was struggling to even get her to say something negative. I'm sure he was even surprised. Like, <laughs> I think it's possible she may have received a letter or two thinking about it, uh, thinking more deeply about it. But the interviewer was really struggling with getting her to say something negative about Prince Harry. Let me see if I can get that interview. Sorry, I didn't have it queued up. If I can't, then I'll just leave it. But I thought it'd be quite interesting to hear what she had to say. Um, Uh, let me see if I can get this up. Uh, no, it's not coming up. Okay, never mind. I will put it on my Instagram page so that you can you can have a look. Oh, I see someone say, oh my goodness, I must mute during the Sharon replay. Isn't she still on B, B Celebrity B? Hear about Sharon Osborne. Okay, but she di didn't say anything um, too negative this time around. Okay, then that's fine. I will move on.
<laughs> I thought it'd be interesting for you to hear what she said because she wasn't obvious negative stance on Harry and Meghan is slightly performative because in this interview she was quite um she was just talking like a normal human being in any case it's quite clear that they want the they want prince harry back in the position of someone who is begging to be let in because he has been um broken by the british media and because they've not been able to succeed against the pressures which are being exerted against them by the British royal family, just the way they did to Sophie and Edward. Uh, thank you, Reba. What are you saying? Hello, Weezy, squaddies. As an American, I am disgusted by this poll. No one asked me, so I don't believe it. We want Harry to stay. Ozzy probably went off on Sharon for her past lies. Yeah, I think so, because it was unbelievably neutral in this instance it was i was shocked but it's okay we move on anyway the fact that they said that they don't want harry and megan to come back to the uk is has been made clear ad infinitum by headline after headline like this one where they said prince harry and meghan markle's uk return ruled out in clear indication from the palace but at the same time they say harry and meghan markle urged to return to royal duties as princess and risks burnout <laughs> they kind of schizophrenic in their reporting in their attitude in their behavior and it's quite clear they do need harry and megan but they're not prepared to meet harry and megan's requirements for them to come in and assist them prince of princess Anne burning out is a real possibility and she has warned them in the past that the slim down monarchy would would not go well for the royal family but did they listen to her no 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 they didn't so here we are in this situation where you've got princess anne who is oh how old is she i think she must be about 60 or 70 years old let me see princess anne how old How old? Yeah, Princess Anne is 73 years old. And you've got Sophie, how old? Sophie is almost 60. She's 59 years old. Sophie is just, is, uh, almost 60 years old she's 59 so you've got a 73 year old and a 59 year old being the ones shouldering the royal family's duty responsibility burden and even though they are the only ones available to carry on with the royal family's responsibilities they are so petty that they refuse to shine the spotlight on the royals that is sophie and princess anne and the other royals who are actually doing the work because they are afraid they will steal the spotlight imagine that <laughs> that is so petty who wants to work for a firm like that who wants to be around people like that who wants who wants your livelihood to be in the hands of anyone like that and so it continues without a beat prince harry will have some explaining to do if he doesn't return to the uk in may and there was a lot of conf discussion about this on twitter so i decided to go to 
the St. Paul's Cathedral calendar to see whether there was anything on their on that day's schedule. So the day he's supposed to be coming into the UK for this 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games is the 8th of May, according to the newspaper reports, right? But I checked this calen the calendar and there's nothing like that on it. You can see the date. This is from the St. Paul's Cathedral calendar and there's nothing like that on it. Okay. So just looking at the tweets of the people who were discussing it, and they said to everyone under this post, the anniversary of Invictus first games launched in, was launched in September, not May. And the St. Paul's Cathedral is for something specifically involving the UK veterans. The Invictus Foundation isn't the one that actually planned this event. Okay. Well, that's good to know because I've checked it out myself and it means that those reports that we're seeing that Harry may come to the UK in May for a 10th anniversary is not true. And somebody else said, I have been questioning this all along. This May 8th service at St. Paul's is not an official Invictus event, not on IG Foundation website. Harry has not confirmed he's speaking, attending. I would love to know who arranged this event. It smells like a trap. So in conclusion, I think we can guess that there is nothing like this happening and it's just fake news. That is the upshot of it all, that there's nothing like that happening and it's just fake news. Nothing like that is happening. Right. And there was this article in the papers today. Prince William and Kate asked Harry and Meghan to bring their children to visit, says the says expert. So as I said to you uh, before, um, this is one of the topics they have on rotation to bring up to discuss about Harry and Meghan. Yeah. Because Kate and William have withdrawn their children from circulation. So why should the Sussexes who have stepped back from working as senior members of the royal family then now drop everything they're doing and bring their children to the UK for who, what, why? Yeah, who, what, and why? Besides, there's so many issues with them bringing their kids to the UK. Shall we first of all start with the fact that they do not, they've still not confirmed that Harry has been given the security he has been requesting. After all, this is from the, this document on the screen you are seeing is from his security case, right? Where it says that he had actually um, thought to bring his wife and his children to the UK on the 3rd of August, 2022, but Ravek would not give him the requested security. So chances of him bringing his children to the UK are almost zero to none. And let's not even also forget that when Harry and Meghan were in the UK, the royal family did not want to associate with Harry and Meghan or their children. Nobody attended Lilibet's first birthday party. And the receipts were sent to the Daily Mirror when they published this article. So I think as far as that is concerned, it's really nothing to worry about because if they were trying to bring this up for today, it has been squarely dealt with. Um, as we are talking today, 
And if you're new here, I extend my warm invitation for you to join our vibrant community. These are interesting times indeed. Many of us might say that we are actually living in historic times where historic things are happening before our very eyes. And uh, on this channel, we don't just skim the surface of the plethora of news that comes in on a daily basis. We delve into its implications. And at times we take action, as you will see on the channel today. So whether you're seeking analysis or you're seeking to engage or you're just looking for an update, there's something here on this channel for everyone. If you've visited this channel before, but you haven't subscribed, welcome back. This is the time to subscribe. If you haven't already, please go ahead to hit that subscription button. To all who have been riding with me from the beginning, as usual, a heartfelt thank you for being a part of our community. In addition to subscribing, I would encourage you to like, share, and drop a comment. Okay, and if you are unsure of what to say, just leave a heart emoji or some other symbol of appreciation in the comment section. Your engagement means the absolute world to us, okay? And moving on to the next part of our video. So Megan has been asked, was asked to play small. So you look at this headline, Meghan Markle asked to work quietly on brand amid royal family stress. And I'll just read a section of the article just so that we can discuss it. Meghan Markle is asked to be aware of royal family crisis amid new brand launch. Meghan Markle has been told to be considerate of Kate Middleton ahead of launching her own brand. The Duchess of Sussex is reminded to look for the optics, especially amid the Princess of Wales's cancer diagnosis. PR expert Lynn Carrot says, as Meghan is no longer part of the monarchy, she's free to launch her brand whenever she likes. She tells Mira, however, given Kate's ongoing cancer treatment, it would be wise for Meghan to be sensitive to the timing of her branch launch her brand launch, sorry, considering the public support for Kate worldwide. Lynn added, it might be best for Megan to work quietly on her brand behind the scenes for now and launch it publicly sometime in the summer when we've received some good news about Kate and King Charles's health. I love how they feel like they can um, insert their opinions into how Harry and Meghan conduct their business. <laughs> I just love how they think that they have a right to dictate to Harry and Meghan how and when they should do things. Like, what? Are you serious? Consider thinking about how uh, they have acted in the past. That's one thing. But this thing they're saying, doesn't it remind us of what Oprah said, Megan told her uh, about what the courtiers said to Megan when she first joined the royal family? She said, Oprah reveals Megan told her in 2018 that she would advise to be half herself after she joined the royal family and say she was surprised by couples racism claims, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it rings, it rings almost the same. Megan asked to work quietly on brand amid royal family stress. Where is that ever said and where is that ever done? Don't do your business because the people who have been abusing you for years are ill. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Meanwhile, this was Kate. When Megan was going through all her 
crises, miscarriage, suicidal ideation, and depression. Pulling pints in a bar with a wide smile, going about her life and her business like no man's business. So why was Meg, why is Megan supposed to put her life on hold just because Kate is ill? They did, Kate didn't even tell Megan that she was ill. Megan heard in the news. And considering how things that are run in the media can be said to be fake news, even if Megan heard it in the news, how is she supposed to acknowledge that that is even true? In any way, it doesn't even make any difference whether she believes it to be true or not. They don't have that kind of a relationship for her to consider putting her own business on hold because Kate is not well. Anyway, let me look at your comments. <laughs> there are a lot right here. Hello, Rosario. Okay, this is not for me. Beverly says, tell the two lazy non-working idiots to take their children to visit the Sussexes in California. They might actually have some benefit from being away from miserable UK. The sun may dry all the rubbish in their brain away. Remember, they were invited to her first birthday party and also for the christening of Lilibeth Diana. Yep. Yep. Do these people really? Yeah. Megan needs to pay these people no mind. That is so ridiculous. They still want Megan to be 50% of herself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is the first I see a whole article on that ridiculous headline. What a load of cards well up. Still treating Megan like her other way. My dear Megan, keep doing you. We love our Megan. Absolutely. So... Jessica says, let me get this straight. No one has told them in UK that the sun has set on the empire. Their request means absolutely nothing anymore. Absolutely. Have they lost their cotton picking minds? They think they own Megan. She's supposed to put her life on hold for the vindictive evil people. Okay, so I guess these comments mean that you don't agree. <laughs> With the, t the media. <laughs> I guess these comments mean that you don't agree with the media. Anyway, this is what Megan had to say. <laughs> Since she will not be coming to the UK to see Kate, she has arranged to visit a US hospital so that the attention and well wishes she could not offer to Kate directly, she is offering to the children instead. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the response. It was just so apropos. <laughs> So uh, the article reporting on this event said, Megan, who was dressed in a chic floral ensemble, got into character and engaged with the young patients as she took her time reading all of the books. While reading, the Duchess participated in STEAM activities tied to each book that let patients explore counting, colors, problem solving, and more. So... Uh, uh, at the end of her visit, Megan took Polaroid pictures, which she personally signed for each patient before heading out the door. She was gifted a sticker and a hug. Megan was not joined by her husband, Prince Harry, or their children, Prince Archie and Princess Lily. So um, I have uploaded this video. There are a couple of videos that went along with this event, which have been shared onto online, onto social media. But as usual, I'm not sharing any of that on my YouTube channel because of the guidelines. 
But if you want to see, you can go to my Instagram page. Uh, I'm going to be sharing the link in the comment section. Go ahead to my Instagram page to see what the videos look like. Very cute. Um, very cute videos of Megan participating in the activities with the children. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see if I can... So I've put the link to the Instagram page in the chat. You can go over there and have a look. And I will be here. Okay. Right. So I have included a blown up picture, uh, uh, one of the larger pictures of her taking part in that event, just because it's very pretty and all the pictures worked. And she was dressed almost like the room, it's like they color coordinated. <laughs> And this photograph, and this, um, we have seen this dress on Megan before. I think this was on one of their last trips to the UK. And in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the choice to wear this dress was kind of deliberate. Yeah. Hi, Joyce. Good evening to you. Thank you for your hard work. I love seeing Megan doing what she does best. Yes. She had such a lovely interaction with the, with the children. If you want to see the video, it's on my Instagram page. The link to my Instagram page is in the chat. You can go over there. Uh, let me see. You can go over there and have a look. Let me see whether I can, let me pin the link. Let's see. Okay, so it's now pinned to the top of the chat. So if you want to go to my Instagram page, you can go Uh, you can go over to have a look. All right. Then, what's next? Oh, I found something quite odd, which I thought would be interesting to talk about. Okay. So, King Charles's attempt to compete with Prince Harry and Meghan in America. Apparently, the, the organization which was formerly known as the Prince's Trust is now known as the King's Trust USA. Guys, make it make sense. You're the king in the UK. You leave the UK where you were king and you take your main charity away from the UK and bring it to America just because... And my, I was initially confused by this until I put all the pieces together as I was creating this video. And I thought, oh, this is the ro royal family's attempt to try to repair their image in America. So, but it makes no sense. It makes no sense. But they have positioned they have positioned the charity as though it's a global charity because they know that people will criticize them for trying to or start a charity in America. In one way, it kind of makes sense because. King Charles must be looking to reduce his um, impact, re reduce his presence sort of as 
he's got an heir waiting to ascend the throne, okay? And so William is supposed to be starting up with his projects, which should be taking center stage. But <laughs> being the kind of person that he is, King Charles really ought to have, since this charity was so successful and he already knows, knows that William um, hasn't really got anything worthwhile under his belt. I think he should have found a way to bring William into this charity. Anyway, this is just my thoughts, my opinion. But yeah, he they have started a charity in America. It's the Old Prince's Trust, which is now the King's Trust USA. Yep. Let me share this, share my screen with you so that you can see it's, it's the King's Trust and they have positioned it as a global charity now. It, don't you think it would have made more sense if they had, well, I think, let me just look at this. I think that is what they tried to do but they have positioned it as a global trust, right? But it would have made more sense if they had made it like a former colonies trust. No, not a former colonies trust, Re really rather more um, commonwealth because even though America was is a former U UK colony, but they are no longer under the control of the UK. So they've got these tags which show where they've got presence. They've got Canada, they've got USA, they've got Jamaica, they've got Barbados, Barbados, Ghana, Nigeria, Rwanda, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. So these look like they're all from um, Commonwealth countries. But America is not a Commonwealth country. America is not a Commonwealth country and they have positioned it in the title King's Trust USA, unless they are saying that this is the King's Trust branch in USA. Let me see whether there is a King's Trust uh, Tanzania. King's Trust Tanzania. Nope. No, there isn't. Uh oh. Well, actually, there is. There is a Tanzania UK Trust. Okay. But there isn't a King's Trust Tanzania. There is only the King's Trust USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's mainly to compete with Harry and Meghan. It's, it's, that's what it is. They're competing for influence and they're competing for power. Jessica says, this is a false narrative. Which part? Uh, we settled it with England back in 1776. This is the first I've heard of the USA being part of that trust. Uh, I am sh actually sharing my screen with you. It is uh, directly from the King's Trust website, the King's Trust USA. Yes, great point. Uh, Rochelle says they set up a US branch of the charities to collect American money. Yes, they are competing for ch the charitable money available in the US and also uh, let me see uh, and uh, and also guess who is their brand ambassador 
Lionel Richie. It seems like there are only black people in America. <laughs> oh, 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 Nancy Etro. Oh, 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 oh. I forgot to put the bro the troll spray on today. Just a minute. I'm just running over there right now to get that done. Just a moment. Content. I can't take my eyes off this ridiculous people for a second. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Oh my God. I have kicked her out with the quickness. Okay. Ooh. Right. So, King Charles, he has got himself, um, Apparently, they're only American people, they're only black people in America. Uh, King Charles, he is, it's, I think we can see this for what it is. It's basically just to compete with Harry and Meghan. That's it. Uh, if you check on the website, you can see that they haven't achieved much uh, I think they started this in 2023 and they've got Lionel Richie as the King's Trust's global ambassador and chairman of the global ambassadors group Lionel Richie and King's Trust global ambassador Edward Enninful and then you've got Charlotte Tilbury who is Prince's Trust Ambassador for em Enterprise. And they've got evidence of things that they have done in Rwanda. In UK and, uh, and in a Southside Beauty Supply in Chicago, where they gifted someone $1,000 of seed funding toward launching their business. Yeah. That is... Rochelle says, Weezy, check out the New York Times 2019 article about King Charles III and Willie U.S. charities. <laughs> I will do, but this is a recent one. This is a recent one. Uh, it's, can you see the copyright? It is 2024. And I'm sure if I dig into the registrations of this new charity, this we will find that it was done in 2024 as well. Remember last year when we heard that King Charles was not going to hand over the Prince's Trust to William? I'm sure that was when this happened. Anyway, it doesn't change anything because they are literally ineffectual in all respects. When they try to do anything, they don't put the intent and energy into it. So it just hangs where it is. <laughs> this does not make sense for the King's Trust to set up its stall in the US. Why is it not in Australia or Canada that's a Commonwealth country? Lionel Richie, that's funny. Sussex trolls. Exactly. I don't understand the reason why Lionel Richie would well, 
put him so I'm quite surprised. I don't know his politics really, but I'm quite surprised that he will allow himself to be used in this fashion. And I don't understand the reason why celebrities don't prepare themselves properly for their older years so that they don't have to compromise their integrity by aligning themselves with organizations or people or things which make just, you know, take years just reduce their integrity in all respects. Anyway, so that's that for for as far as um, King Charles and his attempts to take over America. So with the royal family's senior actors out of com commission, just going back to it, Unsurprising that the British media are behaving like people who are suffering from madness and memory loss because, okay, so they want Harry and Meghan to go away, in fact, get out of the UK, but at the same time, they want them back. They want them to get out of the UK again, but at the same time, they want them to come back with their children. and they want them to get out of the uk and even where they are in the us they would want them to operate at a smaller scale so that they don't overshadow the royal family um but at the same time they agree that they have a right to do their business but they just want them to do it smaller <laughs> <laughs> you can see that they are not all right, are they? <laughs> it's quite clear why they are doing all of this. I think they are going bankrupt. And this person who analyzes the media landscape says the Daily Mirror and Daily Express are rich. That is the rich organizations. In February, the Express was minus 4% print readers and minus 12% digital. Mirror was minus 3% print and minus 13% only in February. Asset stripping media company Reach made three rounds of redundancies in 2023 and is heading for more in 2024. So, Anything they can do to trigger conversation, to trigger people, to make, cause them to at least engage with them online is what they're after. But the thing is, the more their lies are being exposed, the more they are lacking credibility, the more people are drawing away from them. But rather than them improving the quality of their reporting, they are leaning harder into their lies and sensationalism journalism, which people are reaching away from because, because life is so hard already. They don't want more sensational reporting, which turns out to be fake news. And this scandal with Kate is not making it any better. This scandal with Kate, fake news, fake photos, fake videos is not making it any better. I think all around the world right now, I think the British media are seen at the bottom of if there is a league table, and I think I do believe that there is one, they are at the bottom of the league table at the moment. So this is the reason why I have said it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. It's just that we have to keep an eye on it so that when they are getting too toxic, we can beat them down. So we can give, we can push back uh, against whatever it is that they are trying to come up against the Sussexes with. Uh, we recently had Dan Wooten 
coming online to say he's he's he has prepared a video exposing uh, exposing the Sussex squad. So uh, I think we're expecting that video tomorrow, and we have that to look to. Uh, and they are trying to remove any support that the Sussexes can have because the pushback that the Sussex squads do utilize to fight against the false narrative that they want to use to overpower the message that the Sussexes are trying to put out there is quite successful. We are quite successful in what we're doing. So, yep. Yeah. All right. So I've got a question for everyone. I wonder if you could tell me, I was trying to figure out a way to do a poll uh, in, uh, oh, let me look at your comments. Uh, hi, House of Sussex, how are you doing? Hi, Kathy, uh, hi, Twingy, Twing, Twingy Twango, how are you doing? Hi, Terry, the British monarchy and tabloids are just wanting the Sussexes to be bankrupt. Exactly, yep. Princess Meg is so brilliant and compassionate. Service is universal, absolutely. Lionel saved King Charles's embarrassment by headlining the coronation concert as Adele and all the big singers had refused to perform for Charles. And so he has given him a big title. What was that title again? Let me see. He has given him the title of... He has given him the big title of King's Trust Global Ambassador and Chairman of the Global Ambassadors Group, Lionel Richie. Every time I see these fluffy titles, it reminds me of what Megan said when she was talking to Oprah Winfrey. And she was like, this construct There's so much protection of this construct. And this means that if she was ever to open her mouth, I think that we will find out that a lot of the things that the royal family have put up there to legitimize their position in society is all fake. But for the moment, we can't prove nothing. Good, good, good. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Terry says, British tabloid press is all drama to make money, but the younger generation, they don't care. They absolutely do not care at all. Because they are not talking about the things that the younger generation actually care about. <laughs> Joanne says, who cares? Lionel can keep the stupid title. <laughs> uh, I wasn't here from the beginning so I don't know if this was already explained is the King's Trust the same as Prince's Trust but they just changed the name over it's actually just changed the name over to King's Trust it's the former Prince's Trust guess where? in USA <laughs> Guess where? The King's Trust is now King's Trust USA. So I thought, um, before we go on, let me ask uh, you all a question. I just wondered if you were asked to identify, I did a poll sometime, and some people uh, about identifying what kind of squaddy you are. Are you just an admirer who appreciate Prince Harry and Meghan's journey for a distance so that we call you distant admirers? Or are you a follower who enjoys being updated on the news and gossip about Harry and Meghan so that we call you news followers? 
Are you a supporter who may not favor Harry and Meghan personally, but hold a dislike for the royal institution? In which case we can call you an anti-royal supporter. Or are you uh, someone who is an advocate who you are willing to take activist steps to support Prince Harry and Meghan's mission and projects? Or are you a financial backer that you are, uh, you might not be a big time financial backer, but if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, then you we put you in the category of financial backer because a financial backer is anyone who is inclined to financially support Prince Harry and Meghan's initiative within their means. So I'm not asking you to answer the question, but when I did this poll on another platform, uh, I think about 60% of the people said they were advocates who were willing to take advocate, uh, activist steps to support Prince Harry and Meghan's missions and projects. And some people actually send me messages asking whether there is anything they can do to support Harry and Meghan. So I put together... Uh, a few steps that we can take and it all depends on if you are willing but I think I thought it might be useful to have a go in a session like this for instance if you are the type to do at take activist steps but you don't want to be writing letters or talking to anyone you can actually uh, take steps like you can follow the social media handles of the groups that Harry and Meghan are interested in, like World Central Kitchen, for instance. Remember when we first started? I did tell you that, um, let me see if I can find the... Uh, let me see if I can find the slide where we were talking about what had happened in Gaza, um, the loss in Gaza. So if you're on Twitter, I think if we are really keen on supporting Harry and Meghan, we should take steps to put our fingers <laughs> where our interests lie. So if you're on Twitter, or on any of the social media platforms, go ahead to um, join the, to follow their page on Twitter. Also, um, I also, can we try and make it fun by trying to do that now? while we speak is that something that everyone is open to doing i am an active supporter world central kitchen center ballet comfort and baby to baby yep and also on the on YouTube, we can follow the Invictus Games Vancouver YouTube channel. I will put the link to the YouTube channel in the chat. If you haven't followed them, I'm not quite sure why not. In Games Vancouver. Yes, it's terrible. It, it really, really is. It really is. But I think I think that this um, this latest tragedy is something that is now beginning to affect other members of the security UN Security Council which is something which may cause 
because uh, I think a British person, Russian person, and three other people from uh, other countries were affected by the blast. And so, um, I know that UK has asked Israel to provide an immediate response in in their inquiry as to why this happened. So, um, let's go ahead to follow the Invictus Games YouTube page. Um, it only has 387 subscribers. For the people that Harry and Meghan are, knowing how much is up against them, let's support what they support. This is the way we can, this is the way we can support. Not all of us have the big bucks to attend the galas and so on and so forth, but we can at least support them in this fashion. The Invictus Games also have an Instagram page. I'm going to put the Invictus Games Instagram page. Each link in the consumer watch. The, and this is one way that we can support, and it's free of charge. Um, Invictus Games Va Foundation. Let's see, Invictus Games. If you're on Instagram, you can go ahead to follow the page. The link is now in the comment section. And the Invictus Games also have a TikTok. I'm just going to get the link to their TikTok page. Two games. Two, three, twenty, twenty-five. Okay. Here you go. No, you don't have to. Uh, hi, Beverly. You don't have to. Beverly says, I try to follow and give where I can. Being a senior, money is very tight. No, it's not all about money. You can just follow their YouTube pages follow their um, their social media pages that is more than good enough because um, they have they need the numbers 
for support for sponsorship proposals, although they operate on a very high level, um, but they still need the numbers. And that's something that is free that we can all participate in, which is why I, this is why I am um, proposing that we follow the social media handles that we know about for now, because that will greatly help. And, and the last one, for those people on Twitter, it is my humble suggestion that if you're able to apply for community notes, that you should go ahead to do so. Okay? Go If you can apply for community notes, you should go ahead to do so. It takes a while to be able to make community notes so once you apply like i applied about three months ago it took them about three weeks to a month to approve the community notes on twitter and then after that they say you have to have a rating of five before you're allowed to write community notes yourself so it takes a while. And these are just things that I think that we can utilize as we push back. Okay. Okay. So um, I think that's all I have for this evening. It's been lovely seeing everyone. Um, that's all I have for this evening. Uh, it's Wheezy signing out. Until next time. Uh, I will just look at the comment section before I go, but as far as the news on Harry and Meghan is concerned, that's all I have. Um, so these are just my suggestions for the, the things that we can do in support. Rather, I'm very much an uh, activist type in nature. And I find it a bit, I get a bit restless just sitting back watching and not being able to do anything. But if I'm able to at least support them by um, following their social media pages, I am doing all of that to make sure that they have my numbers actually forgot to include uh, Megan's um, page on Instagram. If you haven't followed the American Riviera Orchard already, you can go ahead to do so. I'm going, let me get the link for that one as well. And uh, I'm Instagram. Let me get the one that one for you for everyone as well. And then I will be heading off for the evening. American movie era. Watch it. It's, do you guys know that it's currently at 584,000 subscribers? But you need more. All right. So the link for the um, Megan's Instagram page is now in the comment section. Okay, guys, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me. Until next time, it's Wheezy. As as House of Sussex says, no bad energy. <laughs> Bye. Yalibi says, activist and financial supporter. <laughs>
All right. Bye. We'll pick this up again next time. Bye now.